In the last episode of History Traveler, uh, we had a chance to join Brandon from the channel Digging on Faith and his buddy Migs uh, to go out to the battlefield where the Battle of Jenkins Ferry was fought. Uh, learned all kinds of cool things and uh, today we're actually going to follow that up by going out to the battlefield itself with some metal detectors and seeing if we can find any artifacts from the fighting that took place there. You ready? <laughs> you ready? But first, we are here, uh, right here at the Grant County Museum in Grant County, Arkansas. We've actually been here already on a previous episode where we were talking about a B-17 that, that crashed here locally near Sheridan. And they have some of the most amazing artifacts uh, from the Battle of Jenkins Ferry. All right, uh, we just got here inside the museum and inside the Grant County Museum, they have probably the largest collection of Jenkins Ferry artifacts that you can find anywhere. Uh, so we got Brandon and, and Megs in here and we're all kind of looking around. And we also have Lindsay. Uh, she is the director of the Grant County Museum and probably obviously knows this place better than any other. Uh, you've been here, what, 11 years? Is yes, that what you said? Okay. 11 years. All right, so anyway, she's gonna show us uh, a few of the items that uh, really kind of stand out here in the Grant County Museum related to the Battle of Jenkins Ferry. Okay, so I just wanted to point out some of my favorite items here in the Jenkins Ferry Gallery uh, at the Grant County Museum. Um, as you'll see, we have such a large collection of Civil War and Jenkins Ferry artifacts that have been excavated and donated to the museum for the past 40 to 50 years. Um, but some of my personal favorites would be items that have been excavated that belonged to the soldiers themselves, personal items that we could kind of relate to and see here. Uh, and it brings a little bit of a human touch to uh, what we're seeing and, and, and learning about, uh, not just what you would see maybe on film or you might um, see in a movie or things like that. This brings a real aspect that we can relate to we have items such as, you know, yeah, kitchen utensils, uh, if you will, spoons, knives, forks. We have uh, some scissors. We have a candle holder. Um, we have uh, some buttons, belt buckles, a canteen, uh, pieces of pottery uh, that would have been used um, by the soldiers. And so this brings a real element, I believe, that uh, it's just so personal. Um, the artillery and all the different things we have are wonderful, but having that personal touch really brings it home for us. All right, so here are a few more of those items that, that Lindsay was talking about. Here's uh, like an old soldier's canteen. It's pretty cool. And then here, uh, make sure I get that in focus, is a, a breastplate. And uh, something that Miggs was telling me is that a lot of soldiers would take that and rip it off because uh, kind of served as a, a bit of a target for the enemy. So a lot of soldiers would discard that. But man, they just have so many interesting pieces here. Here's something else that is just cool as heck to me that, that Lindsay pointed out. Um, now, I wouldn't know what this is if she wasn't here to tell me or if we didn't have the description back here. That's a little vial of sugar. Uh, this was found in the knapsack of a guy named Private R.M. Rogers, uh, who was with the Arkansas Infantry. Uh, but yeah, just another one of those cool little things that, uh, that the soldiers would carry with them. I would have never thought of that. All right, now, uh, no Civil War display is going to be complete without, uh, you know, some, some mini balls and some artillery around. So what we're looking at here are some uh, Federal uh, Hotchkiss artillery projectiles that were recovered from Steele's retreat route as they were uh, leaving the battlefield and trying to get back up to Little Rock. Here you can see some round balls and some canister there. Something that's really cool to me is you get a little extra level of, of history here. Uh, they have a photo taken from the 1950s 
showing some relic hunters uh, who recovered some of these items from the retreat route. Okay, what we have here is the personal pocket watch of a Confederate Brigadier General William R. Scurry. Uh, one of his nicknames was Dirty Neck. Uh, he was from Texas. He was a uh, brigade commander in Walker, the famous legendary Walker's Greyhounds, Walker's Texas Division. The watch was discovered on the battlefield in the area that Scurry led his troops uh, against the federal defensive position in the area of Cooper's or what's called Grimsfield. Um, the watch was lost at the time they feel Scurry was mortally wounded and it fell into the ankle to knee deep water and where it remained until it was found in the late 60s by local relic hunters and eventually wound into the collection of a Dr. William Bill Jones and it remained in its collection for several years um, until it was uh, acquired for the Grant County Museum, which is one of their showpieces of the museum today. And the neat thing about the watch, it uh, was made in Paris, France. Um, it's silver and it's inscribed W.R. Scurry, which can be seen in the interior of the top part of the pocket watch. It also has some other uh, etching, uh, which we feel is maybe his pre-war uh, dragoon designation. So the watch is marked, and it, to my knowledge, it's the only personal piece that can be identified to a specific soldier on the Battle of Jenkins Ferry. Here's a, another item that really adds a human element to this story of the Battle of Jenkins Ferry. Uh, this was written by a federal soldier by the name of William H. Colborn, and uh, he was hit in the knee and uh, was, was taken prisoner. This is the last letter that he wrote to his wife uh, whenever he knew that he was uh, going to die. And um, can't read the, the whole thing, but uh, it says, Dear Wife, who, his wife was Rachel Colborn. He says, I this day, being at the point of death, will try to make known to you my last will and testament. Then he goes on to talk about a, different, a few different things, and he talks about his boy. And at the end it says, Dear family, do not grieve for me. I am going to a better land. I am not afraid to die, but willing to go. I am too weak to write more. Will therefore bid you all a long and affectionate farewell. Your husband and father, William H. Colborn. Wow. Okay, uh, well, those are just a, a few of the historic uh, artifacts from the Battle of Jenkins Ferry uh, here at the Grant County Museum. We're actually going to go ahead and leave here, go back out to the battlefield and uh, see, see if we can do a little digging around and, and see if we can uh, unearth some other things from the battle. We just got out here to the battlefield and uh, of course got the uh, metal detectors running trying to, to pick up some signals uh, and just because the, the world is full of stupid people uh, I've got to make a disclaimer on this. Uh, we are on private ground here uh, so have permission of course to, to detect this area. Uh, you can't detect on the, the public part of the battlefield and, and you can't detect on the private ground. Uh, obviously because it's it's uh, would be trespassing but anyway uh, we're gonna see what we can find out here yeah, okay looks like we might have got our first hit. See what we got. A lot of roots. Oh. 
round ball. Very nice. Hey, here you go. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Sure. All right, so uh, we just pulled our uh, first bullet out of the ground for the day, and by we, I mean Megs. Uh, something that's interesting, if you look, this is uh, a round ball that would have been used in a smoothbore musket. Anytime you see that on a battlefield, uh, you're almost always looking at something that was fired or was, was carried uh, by the Confederates because they were using a lot of antiquated weapons, uh, even up into 1864 at this point in the war. But yeah, pretty cool, pulling a little piece of history out of the ground. All right, just to give you an idea of the, the space where we are, this is the area that the Confederates would have moved through during the Battle of Jenkins Ferry. So this direction right here is kind of pointing towards the, the north, where the Union lines would have been. The vast majority of the fighting took place down that way. Uh, but anyway, a lot of those Confederate guys moved right through this area. Yeah, look at here, everybody's out looking for Civil War bullets. And while they were doing that, old JD found a shed. Looks like it's been uh, gnawed on a little bit. Still in pretty decent shape. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, Brandon thinks he's done found something. He's the professional here, so. I know. <laughs> does it, does it uh, sound like a mini ball to you? Yes, it does. It does sound like a mini ball. It sounded more like a round ball to me. <laughs> hey, it may be. <laughs> no, I don't know jack what I'm talking about with this. Whoop. Got uh, Brandon's field producer here. I need to stay out of her way. Second. Where are you at? Ah, oh, there we are. What do you got? It would be a fired mini ball, 58 caliber mini ball. So, so would that be? Are we looking at a, a Confederate round or a Union round? Well, or? so the Confederates did use three bringers, um, but this was probably likely a, a, a Union bullet. So, yeah, it's far to smashed up on Definitely this right smashed here. up there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, things are so bright I can hardly tell if I'm focused or not. Very cool. Yeah. So this is right here in that area where the, uh, where that Confederate gun battery got overtaken by the second Kansas colored infantry so you have to wonder if that might have been one of the bullets that was fired okay what we have here is a Civil War van it looks to me like it's a I believe it's an infill. This was modified to drag corpses from their fallen positions to their burials. Uh, it wasn't an easy task. Uh, the bodies often laid for hours and were swollen, and, and it wasn't a it wasn't a pleasant experience. But they would fashion a bayonet into what's called a body hook. This one was actually found on the battlefield, probably in the 70s by a friend of mine, uh, Ralph Baggett, and uh, it's, it's been cleaned and coated uh, to preserve it. A lot of the bayonets that were recovered off the battlefield back in the day, uh, because of the wet ground conditions, did not survive. Uh, this one, fortunately, <coughs> did.
So this is right around where the federal line was. And uh, after the battle, there was a soldier who talked about just the, the sadness of this place. And standing in this swampy, ankle deep water that would have been all around here and seeing soldiers buried in these mounds that were sticking up above the swamp water. Well, right here is one of those mounds. And uh, there are actually a, a few others right here in this general vicinity. And the, the way that we know that these are actual burial mounds or mounds where soldiers were buried is that uh, years later there were relic hunters that were digging in the area and uh, actually got into some some bones and of course they they left it alone uh, at that point once they saw what they were getting into um, but yeah pretty crazy there are still soldiers buried right here along this battle line A bullet. Is it a piece? No, it's a bullet, I think. Let's see here. Looks it's like it's badly. Yeah, it got mauled a little bit, didn't it? Well, it was probably in a tree or breast breastwork. Oh, okay. Let's see if you can see. It's, it looks like an infield, though. So this is a Confederate bullet that we're yeah, looks like a, maybe a 54. Okay. Could have been in a tree. Huh. You can see the cavity here, a little piece of it. Yeah. Alright, so we've uh, just moved off of the main battlefield and have moved north of the river where uh, Steele's Union Army was retreating and trying to get back up to Little Rock. And uh, anyway, there, long story short, there is a whole lot of things that, that got dropped right here along this route. So we're going to get uh, geared up here and uh, we'll see if we can find some more stuff. So last year before modern gun season started here in Arkansas, uh, the day before, um, came to a spot where I found lots of Civil War relics uh, directly related to the Battle of Jenkins Ferry. and. After studying maps, and of course I've been here, down here several times, and I know where the Union Army had actually crossed the slough uh, on their retreat to Little Rock. And I thought, there has to be some stuff in that water. Because they were in a hurry, cold, wet, tired, hungry, just ready to get the heck out of here. So, the morning of, I guess it was October 3rd, I can't remember the date anyway, so I got in the water and made an unbelievable discovery. So what I found, and what's crazy is it was so well preserved because of the gray clay and sand mix, um, and the leather even, you can even, it smell, almost smells new, it's, it's wild. So this is a, a Union soldier's uh, accoutrements. Um, I have an ammo pouch, of course I have some more stuff at the house that's being treated, and uh, some, um, anyways, that'll, it'll preserve the leather, propylene glycol. So what I have is a, this is a, a Union soldier's belt, <clears throat> excuse me, belt buckle. I still have the leather attached to it. Man, that is incredible. And part of his uh, percussion cap box, his uh, bayonet frog. And these are the bullets that would have been in this uh, cartridge box here. Huh. That is amazing that it, stayed that well preserved yeah it really is huh? we might find some more oh one thing i want to show you though <clears throat> so the, the really cool thing about this so you can see a j and w so the soldier actually carved his initials jw in a percussion cap part of the percussion cap box with his knife wow 
All right, so here's the uh, current situation. We're getting ready to go walking in a whole bunch of swamp water, which uh, the old Origin boots are, are not quite suited for. So uh, having to switch over to my uh, oh, almost knee-high boots. Here's the problem. I was turkey hunting last year, and I was in a cut cornfield and ran a dead gum corn stob right up through my boot and put a big hole in it. So last night I went to Walmart and got some duct tape to patch it up. So we're going to... We're gonna see uh, if that's going to be suitable for keeping the water out and keeping my feet dry. So right here, up in the middle of the, the slough here, that dark spot, that's where I found all the, the leather goods. Oh wow. And the bayonet. Huh. You can see the crazy. Uh, see the road cut, JV, over there. Yeah. Uh, here's a piece of the original bridge. It looks like to me. Yeah. Coming out of the bank. There's another one there as well. And there's a lot more of them. A lot more of the planks on down the, the creek here. This water's cold. <laughs> I'll bet it is. <laughs> it was it was twenty seven degrees yesterday. <laughs> We got. Just it Holy smokes! See that? Look at that! All the woods, all the wood is still on it. Huh? Go ahead, y'all. Go ahead and do it, and I'll take a photo when you're done. That's incredible. Look at that. And the blade is out too. I was like, why? Why is the blade out? Wow! I'll be dead gum. <laughs> that's interesting. That's well. So this would have been. This is the same hole where the cartridge. <clears throat> excuse me, the cartridge box and belt, and all the other leather stuff was, and the bullets. So apparently, he had had this. It was either on his belt in the case or in his pocket or as a cartridge box. I don't know. That's really cool, right there. Mm. Very personal, you know, item. That'll be cool having that with all the other stuff. It will, exactly. That one's 10 inches plus deep. Okay, so after crossing the creek, quick uh, update on the boot situation. I think that we can classify my, uh, my patch job as a uh, complete and utter failure. Oh, golly. This is over a foot deep. The numbers are really good on this. I'm fairly certain it's not a can because the gray clay layer kind of starts maybe like six, six inches down or so. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Let's see if we can unearth something cool here. gray clay Sam is that rust? No, I don't get You're getting fairly close there? Yeah. Yes. Getting close. Nice. 
starting to look like a gopher. Uh -oh, you see something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. What is it? Well, it's not a Hotchkiss shell. So Hotchkiss shells normally ring up the same, or the noses ring up the same as what this did. Oh yeah. It's a good one. <laughs> it's good. I don't know if it's a... Got a fuse on it or not. No, it's not. You ready? <laughs> you ready? Dude. <laughs> Look at that. Is it? It's a. I don't know. I don't think it's a solid. Solid six pounder. Yeah. Yeah, it's solid. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. No wood drive in. I don't think so. Holy smokes, man! <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Oh God, I've never dug a salt, never dug a, a solid cannonball before. Whew. That's cool. That's good stuff right there. Good job, man. I thought man. for sure it's gonna be a hoshka shell. <laughs> Thanks. Right, hold it up. That is beautiful. What'd you find? A drop mini ball. <laughs> nice. Sounded just like an eight bullet. That is cool as heck. I can't focus worth the darn. There we go. Uh, see, it's still gray. So is that that's a that's a union? Yeah. All right, we're walking along here, and if you come up here, you can kind of see. This little dip here, well this is where the old military road was, where the Union was making their retreat. And uh, there are all kinds of spots along here where there are just bullet dumps, where soldiers were just trying to offload all of their uh, extra weight and, and things like that, or maybe where they slipped and fell and spilled a bunch of their bullets uh, onto the ground. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to uh, grab a metal detector and See if I can uh, maybe try and find something myself here. Oh, no, nope, never mind. Yeah, right in that side wall there. Yeah, you should have got it loose there. Right on top of it there. Right there? No, back towards your hand just a little bit. Right there, you're, there it is. Oh, yep, there we go. Cool. <laughs> that is... Three ring? That's right. And it looks hey, dropped. There we go, yeah. Awesome. Heck yeah, man. First Civil War relic, right? Uh, yeah, that's the first Civil, yeah. uh, Civil War bullet that I've dug. Awesome. Man, that is so cool to think that the last person that touched this was a Union soldier here uh, that was uh, at uh, Battle of Jenkins Ferry. That is awesome. All right, well, uh, we shut the camera off for a second and uh, took a moment to clean up our mini ball here. Uh, Pretty amazing to sit and think about how the very last person to touch this historic artifact was a, uh, a Union soldier who was 
basically making his way up to Little Rock with the rest of the Union Army as they were fleeing from the Confederates who were right on their tail. Um, really enjoyed the, the time that we were able to spend here learning about the Battle of Jenkins Ferry and then to do some digging. Uh, really, the, these guys who do this relic hunting, in a way, or not in a way, it really does help to add to the knowledge of the battle because you get to see where these soldiers were moving. Uh, a lot more has been understood about the Battle of Jenkins Ferry uh, just from these relics that have been dug out of the ground. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you haven't done so already, go to the channel Digging on Faith and subscribe. Tons of great content there. Uh, as a matter of fact, all of those objects that Brandon was showing earlier, uh, there is an episode where it shows him pulling that stuff out of the water, and it's amazing. But uh, anyway, as for now, we're going to get back on the road and head on to the next place. Is that something right there? That is? Okay. That sound like a bullet? These guys can like tell stuff from tones and I don't know Jack. Uh, 